Hello guys, this is Sheldon Edwards here, Mr. HD, and today we're going to be doing a haircut on my boy Taryn here. Um, what we're going for, we're going to go for a low, mid, skin, bald. Um, the reason why is because Taryn's trying to preserve a lot of his curls, and we're going to try to bring it out for him in this, in this picture. So, you know, he wants the curls to come down on the side. So today we're going to do a low, mid, skin on Taryn. So let's go. Let's see where we go with this today. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a balding guideline of where we want the fade to be. So if we want, we want the fade to be about here. So we're just going to go straight into the balding. I've chosen my bubble list at the moment and phew, I pretty like these clippers. So let's go. Let's see where we go from this. So as I say, we're going for the, 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 the mid skin. So just above the temple, we just create the guideline. Now I don't want to turn the blade up on Taryn to be honest because he's a bit sensitive. So I'm just going upwards. When I, when I set that line now, I'm just going to use my clippers, which is set at, um, it's not too sharp. I don't, I, I don't really um, set all my clippers at the same because they have different use and different purposes. So I'll go for my next clipper that I can use on any sensitive person and it wouldn't even give them a scratch. So now I can turn the blades up and create a more smoother finish. Yep. When I'm cutting the hair, I like to basically look at the client and assess the situation before I dig right in there. You know, sometimes some people are very sensitive and you don't want to leave anyone in your chair feeling sore and horrid after the experience. So, you know, you, you just look and just know what you got to do and how to attack that person. You know, some people you just have to be as soft and gentle as a baby. There we go. When we finish that, then I'm going to go for one of my favorite clippers, which is the Wall Senior. And I'm going to re make another guideline, which is 0.5 or, or half, as many will say, on the blades. And what this is going to do is just give me another guideline that I can work with and how to graduate the fade into the top of the air. So I'll just flip it up. And what it is, it's important that you just flip it up about half an inch or so. You know, it, you, you don't push it too much up on the fade because it's going to make you start going higher and we're not trying to get an eye fade, we're trying to stick off to the mid skin fade. Technique is important to be honest. Um, if you can notice, I'm just really just it flipping the clippers. I'm not trying to slide it all the way through because it can give you a, a different kind of finish that you don't want to have when doing this haircut. When I'm cutting here, I like to to brush all the way through. Um, what this does is it helps me to see where I am at and what I'm doing and know how to proceed with the rest of it. So as you can see now, I just clean up everything that I've done and then yeah, let's go. So now we set it off. We're just gonna play with the, with, 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 the, with the gauges a bit and move it up and down just to remove that line that's already there that I've created. Play with it a bit. What, so it's taking it a bit lower. Do the same all the way around. And that's it. So we've literally done the same thing all the way around. Again, I will clean up what I've done so far. Taryn is not really touching the top too much because he's trying to grow the curls out a bit more. So what we're going to do is just comb through to see how we can fade it into the top to make it look very attractive. So I've gone for the number two on my clippers and I'm going to go against the grade, but I'm going to be flipping it as I've been doing before throughout this video. Number two, and I'm going again, I'm going to go about half an inch up. And I'm flipping, and I'm flipping. 
process we have to evenly do the same all the way around that's right so we're flipping flicking it great after this process you can exercise a bit of comb over clippers routine to kind of blend it into the top which i would estimate is about just over four at the moment maybe four and a half four and a half on the top so we'll just put a bit of comb clipper over comb and we're just trying to graduate that in to the top clipper over comb When I'm fading, I like to create a relationship with the front of the airline and the fade on the sides. So I just literally do the same. I just flick it all the way on the front, not too much, just a little bit, but half an inch. You know, that's, that's a flick, flick outwards motion coming back towards you. So it's not really going to the back of his head when you're flipping it on the front. So in the, with the motions, it'll flick it towards you, towards you and it gives it a smoother look on the front, on the airline. Clip over comb. Now we're getting there, now we're getting there. Again, on the airline, we do the same. We just flip it about half an inch a bit, but meanwhile you're flipping it, you're you're literally bringing the clip up towards you instead of away from you because we're not trying to, to take his, his ear off. We're just trying to create a relationship with the front and the side, which is very attractive for the fade. Everything is lying down. I can see what's going on, what I need to touch up, what I don't need to touch up before I get deep into the fade. The next process is going to be so quick, it's like trying to remove that line. I got my 1.5, which is one of my favorite gauges, and I'm going to get in there with my number one. So now we've got the 1.5, we're going to create a relationship from the skin into your already two that we have formed on the side, half an inch up. And we are flipping that through. In my next hand, I'm palming. The number one. That's it. So now I go for my number one and I'm flipping it just the same. And with the number one, I'm taking my time to remove that line. Now you can see the difference from here to here. So we do the same process all the way around. I got my number one flipping. To be honest, I don't have to use the 1.5. I can just use the number one. But I just wanted to create a, um, a way that you guys can actually, you know, take your time to learn. Cause if you're not really too much of a professional, you know, you can use no gauge, no guards or anything if you're, if you're a professional. But if you're just learning and you're watching this video to learn something, I think it's best you start from the guards. And I'm palming the 1.5. Now, while I try to remove the line, I'm just using just the raw blades of the clipper and I put it back to a 0.5 motion. When I'm fading, I use a lot of the corners of the clippers more instead of the, 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 the center of the clipper. And I tend to just turn the clippers on the side just to edge my way through. As you can see, the fade is just dropping right over the ears. And that's what we're trying to do, just a mid skin fade. You know, we're not trying to go above to the crown of his head, which is the eye fade. You know, we're trying to create a nice little style right here. And we go and we do the same all the way around. Now we're at the back of his head. I've got the 0.5 in my hand. Sorry, the, the number one. And I'm just flipping it through. Here we go, fantastic. Use the corners to remove the darker bits. 
darker bits up here, remove it a bit. And we're getting somewhere. I like to go over about the work, you know, just to look and see where we are and go over it, you know. If it doesn't please with me, it pleases my eyes. I just go over the process again until I'm comfortable and I'm pleased. So I'm going to repeat the same process all the way around. As you can see, this is about a number two on the sides because earlier on we took the number two and we went half an inch up. Now we put the 1.5 on it and we do the same flick. As I'm saying, flick with the outward motions coming back to your, to, to your body. And that's a good technique. Once you learn it well, you'll be able to even use number one to complete a full ear cut. You know, you, you don't need any other cards. So I've got the number one back on it now and I'm flicking it towards myself in rapid rotation. Use the corners of the clipper to perfect what I'm doing. Now it's starting to look smooth on the fade. So now we're to the top now. So as before, as I said, Tarin's not really touching the top. So we're just gonna make it look a bit together with the ear cut. Cause the sides are sticking out a bit. This one you can use by freehand, you can use the scissors. But I'm just gonna go by freehand at the moment and just pick off the bits that are sticking off. Just trying to give it a, a more nice definitive shape. And like I always like to say, you're not looking at distant cousins on the top of your head. Everything is looking together. So we're free, free and taking off the spiky ones and the one that's sticking off the side, creating a good relationship. That's right. Fantastic. Perfect. As I'm saying, we're not really troubling the top too much because Tyron doesn't want the top to be touched. We're just creating a little relationship. So we get my number one again. Flick it. Perfect. So we're just gonna get our scissors and just see the ones that's really been a bit more stubborn. And just pick it off. Yep. Perfect. Perfect. Correct. Perfect. So. So you see what I've done now? So I've gone from skin, to skin, faded in mid skin range. And now it's time to give him a bit of shape up. We didn't touch the top too much. We just literally tidied it up. When you're shaping up, just try to stick to the natural ear line as much as possible. But try to create a nice little shape to suit the person's face. Be as gentle as possible, not to cause any irritation when shaping up. As the slipper in my hand actually is zero gap, meaning it's very sharp. Like most of your clippers that you would use to shape up, we repeat the same process on the other side. Okay. 
gentle as possible. And here we go. So we create a line as straight and as sharp as possible. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is, you can see Tyron got a bit of spaces between his shape up, here and there. Nothing's wrong with his ear line, it's just that it's a bit different from others. And I, I think I'll just use a bit of ear fibers just to fill it out a bit. Upon request, you know, we do use fibers. Many people like a sharp look, you know, it could be for going out, for pictures, for an event. And I think the fibers, it just really, really gives it a great finishing look. Note you shouldn't be using it for, like thinking that you're gonna use it to cut the hair. You're gonna use it as a finishing tool, so we're just using it to fill a few gaps. And that's what we're gonna do. We're just applying it first, freehand. So we just, I just apply it, you know, all over the desired areas while I just use my comb to comb it through. You know, I'm trying to make it as natural as possible. I'm not trying to paint him. Yep. Fill it out and I comb it through. Fill it out and comb it through. That's right. Fill it out and comb it through. You can see this area here. Fill it out, comb it through. Fill it out, comb it through. That's right. So it's giving you a natural look and a natural finish. I see uh, many barbers get a bit heavy handed when it comes to the fiber. Yeah. So now we have did that, we did that. We're just gonna go over back to shape up. Yep. Once that is done, I'm gonna apply some holding spray. My favorite actually is the is the, is the Luster's holding spray. The reason is because I think it gives it a nice firm hold and long lasting. So I'm just going to apply a little bit on. When I do that, I use the blow dry heat. Apply some heat so it's a quick dry. Then I get my HD razor. Exclusive blades at the moment. I'm going to attack the hairline. I've already pre-put the blade in, fresh blades. To finish off the look, I'm going to apply some, uh, some gel. To give him a, a nice little look overall. I think I'm gonna go for the S-curl gel. And uh, along with the sponge, the S-curl sponge, I can create a nice look. For the product I'm choosing today, I'm gonna go for the S-curl styling gel, which I think can give him a nice look over his ear. Just enough, let me see if I might need some more. You know, you, 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 you rub it all over your hands till it's even a paste all over your palms and then you just gently tap it into the ear. Gently, all over, till it's spread all over to give it a desired look. I think I can get away with a bit more. You want to gently apply it or spread it even over your hand because you don't want to put too much that it's just sticks all over one part of your ear. Takes you ages to rub it out. And to be honest, this gel is pretty light. So it's good. Now that I feel like it's all over evenly, to the desired look. 
So I can, I use my fingertips to basically rub it in so it reaches to the scalp of the hair a bit. Then I use my escrow sponge. Yep, so I use my escrow sponge. Comes with nice little filtered holes so you can reach out nice and grab onto your ear basically. Just hold on to it, gives it a nice curls. Gives you a nice natural look. As I said, Taryn's trying to get the, the curls all the way around so I didn't trim the top too much. So now with the S curl gel and the sponge, we've created a nice curly natural look for Turin. I'm gonna use some blow dry heat just to dry a bit. comb it through, see where if I need to touch anything up, comb it through, comb it through, I just clip a little bit, just to get this, the, the spiky bits, the bit that's not, that's not Stick into the plan basically on top of his head. And yeah. So use the scissors and take those bits off. Look on your head. Yep. It's getting there, it's getting there. Loving what I'm seeing. And then to finish off Tarin now, he will just go back over the shape up one last time. I use some powder, you know, powder. What I do with the powder is, it basically helps you to clean off the surface of the head while you're shaping. I just use some powder. Anything that's sticking up with the clipper, it's just removing it. Gives you a nice clean look. And here we are. Let me know how you feel about my videos and then let's take it to another level. HD cuts, let's go.